Hey there everybody, this is Taylor with Royal Gorge Anglers in Canyon City, Colorado, the oldest fly shop and fly fishing guide service and only Orvis endorsed outfitter on the Arkansas River Basin. Uh, thanks so much for viewing here today uh, and happy Valentine's Day today, uh, which means folks that we are in mid-February already uh, and really um, enjoying fishing on the Arkansas Freestone already. We've had some very, very mild conditions uh, in the first few weeks of February, uh, really the last few weeks of January. Um, we had some cooler weather uh, in early January, late December, um, kind of that typical winter weather around here. Uh, but we're already, you know, seeming to turn the corner here uh, into more early spring style conditions, uh, at least in Canyon City and most parts of Bighorn Sheep Canyon. Uh, the weather here this week and Valentine's week, we've got highs in the 50s every single day. Uh, next week, even warmer. Um, you know, we've got some 60 degree highs forecasted next week, uh, which means that um, currently there's really no shelf ice to deal with, um, very minimal slush, kind of maybe a little bit, you know, during that late morning uh, when things kind of, any ice formation breaks or anything there, but really for the most part, uh, very, very manageable conditions for anglers out there. And, and it really has been for the last several weeks. Uh, you know, so uh, some some really great opportunities for you to get out there uh, and enjoy here the last few weeks of February. And, you know, as everyone knows, March is a, a fantastic month on the Arkansas River Freestone with a, a large upturn in that blue winged olive um, activity uh, throughout the water column. And then of course, uh, heavier hatch activity uh, as we progress through March. Uh, currently, what is uh, driving uh, feeding um, activity within the trout population is that stonefly, that golden stonefly. And we are, uh, you know, now apparently seeing a really big upkick in stonefly molt activity, meaning that those stoneflies are active crawlers on the substrate. Uh, you know, we're not in the heaviest part of the stonefly molt. This is the very, very beginning. Uh, but what that means for fish is you've got uh, a cheeseburger, a big stonefly nymph um, that's very, very active uh, on the substrate, crawling around, um, preparing for that, that molt activity, which is a stage of their life cycle. Uh, and um, that means a, a large food source is present in the water column and active in the water column. So um, not only are we seeing warmer water temperatures because of that warming air temp, uh, but we're also seeing uh, stonefly activity, uh, you know, kicking up, which, uh, you know, those two pieces of, pieces of the formula equal um, overall more productive fishing and kind of a movement into that early spring fishing window on the Arkansas. Uh, now, does that mean that winter is over? Um, no, of course not. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's still very much winter on the upper basin. Uh, you know, we've got great snowpack upstream, which is fantastic. Uh, we're right around 100%, 95 to 100% of average uh, snowpack right now uh, on the Arkansas, um, which sets us up for a fantastic summer season. That's exactly what we want. We've got good water in storage at Twin Lakes and Clear Creek Reservoirs, and then we also have import water via the Fry Arc Tunnel. Uh, so we've, we're in a really great position to have plenty of water through the summer season uh, and a good average runoff, which is very, very healthy for the river from a cleansing perspective, uh, moving sediment downstream. It's absolutely what we want for the health of the fishery. And so uh, still winter, very much so on the upper basin, still snow up there, still cold overnight. Um, but down here in Canyon City and Bighorn Sheep Canyon, we are in the banana belt, the climate capital of Colorado. And so 
you have to understand that we're going to have a lot of warm days, uh, you know, already in the forecast, in a pretty accurate forecast to be in the 50s and 60s, uh, the remainder of this week and next week, 60 degree highs. And then, you know, of course, we'll have those mixed in cool downs that will happen. And those are days that you probably want to fish a tailwater. Uh, you know, the Arkansas tailwater being a great opportunity for you as well, just 25 minutes east of Canyon City. Uh, however, uh, on those w warmer strings of days in the last few weeks of February and first few weeks of March, we've got fantastic opportunities to get out there and have phenomenal days, mostly nymphing, focusing on stonefly nymphs, free swimming caddis larva, uh, crane fly larva and the midge life cycle with some mixed in blue winged olive nymphs here and there, uh, focusing on those bugs and uh, focusing on the substrate. Uh, the fish are in areas of least resistance. They're in walking speed current, deeper tail outs, below heavier riffles. That's where you're going to find fish right now. They are hugging the bottom. That's just where they are during this time period. So um, now when the stonefly molt activity really hits high gear, a lot of those fish will move into those heavier riffles on those warmer days. And you will find fish in, you know, heavy oxygenated water searching for stonefly nymphs. That will happen. Um, so keep that in mind. But over the next couple of weeks, really still focusing on those deep tail outs and more specifically walking speed current. Foam is home. Find any of those deep tail outs with foam lines on the surface. That's great uh, water to look for fish. Uh, and so um, one thing I'd love to do today uh, is we actually pulled a SANE sample earlier this morning uh, and we are going to take a look at the actual bugs from the Arkansas here from Bighorn Sheep Canyon, uh, and we are going to diagnose what we're looking at there, and then we're gonna go to the fly cases and we're gonna go, okay, these are the patterns that we are going to use to replicate these active bugs right now. Um, and of course, we're looking at those stoneflies, those those uh, midge larva, those midge pupa, um, your BWO, blue-winged olive nymphs, your crane fly larva, and other sundry bugs that that we found, uh, we will certainly point out. Uh, and I think that's a huge component of how we uh, grow as anglers is understanding, hey, during the different seasons, this is what's going on with the bug life, with the aquatic invertebrates underneath the surface. Um, this is what fish are focused on. And so it's no different in the early spring. It's actually simplified in the early spring because we can really dial it down to a core three or four bugs. Whereas when we push out into the summer season, we're looking at a lot of different bug life to deal with. And so it, it gets a bit more complicated, but on the flip side of that, fish are so opportunistic in the summer season, you can throw a lot of attractor dries and nymphs and streamers and things of that nature, uh, which are a lot of fun. So um, let's take a look at the bug life right now via the same sample that we pulled this morning. Uh, and then we will take a look at some patterns to replicate those moving forward uh, and how you can be successful as an angler uh, out there here in the early spring on the Arkansas River Basin. All right, folks. So we're back in the fly shop with our SANE sample here from this morning. As you can tell, a lot of the, uh, you know, bugs that we've been discussing here as kind of our core players here in, you know, late winter, early spring are, you know, represented in this sample. So first and foremost, we've got our heavy hitters, which, you know, we're certainly entering that stonefly molt time period. And these stoneflies are active crawlers and will become more and more active as we move through February and into March. As that molt happens, you can tell we've got three really good representations of golden stonefly here. Um, and, you know, you've got anywhere from, say, a size eight with this larger guy right here to a size 
12 or even 14 with some of these others. So that'll give you an idea on size range and really pretty, pretty dark right now. You can tell, you know, they've got a hint of tan gold to them, but pretty dark and that coloration will change as they go through the, go through the molt process. Um, we've also got a really cool Drake nymph here, uh, which, you know, as many of you know, we've seen more and more drakes uh, in the uh, aquatic invertebrate population here over the last several years, um, or say five or six years. And uh, those are very hatch active in the fall, typically. But as you can tell, they're, you know, represented in the bug population is in, in that nymph category even right now um, and kind of active there, out there on the substrate. These guys doing cartwheels here, they're, uh, you know, are millions and billions of free swimming caddis larvae out there. There are just tons and tons of these guys and they're very active during this window of time. Uh, we've also got a uh, cased caddis in here, um, which that's your Brachycentris occidentalis. Um, and so we're going to see those guys more active in the April window. Um, and they will pop out and hatch. You can tell as I'm squeezing that guy, you can see the little guy kind of popping out. Um, they will pop out and hatch, uh, you know, in usually mid April here in Canyon city and, uh, late April, as you go up, uh, the river and into May, it will progress upstream from there. Um, we've got our crane fly larva, which, uh, you know, folks, if you don't fish crane flies, you know, really anywhere in the state of Colorado, you're doing yourself a disservice, but especially on the Arkansas Freestone, there are a lot of crane flies on this river. And so we've got, you know, a great representation and that again, like your stone fly, that's a cheeseburger. That's a big meal for a trout. Um, <clears throat> and then all of these little guys here, and we've got tons of them. They are immature blue winged olive nymphs and you can tell you know they're pretty small right now they're size 20 22 um, but they'll get to size you know 16 18 um, you know that 16 to 20 range will be our uh, focus as uh, we roll through the month of March and into April uh, when that is some heavy activity we've got some midges in here um, not as many as you think really folks, there's really not a ton of midges out there that are, you know, um, active on the substrate, at least we're still seeing midges hatch, you know, on those sunny days. And, and they're certainly, um, you know, a great food source for fish in this window of time, but, um, by the sane sample and by what's active on the substrate, it is truly stonefly, cranefly, free swimming caddis larva, and, BWO nymph, and that's why we we are fishing, uh, you know, certain patterns right now, which we're about to show you. Alrighty, team. So now that we've seen the real bugs, let's see how we're gonna quote unquote match the hatch with uh, particular patterns. Starting things off in the stonefly category, you can tell that I'm really um, throwing out a strong representation of stonefly nymph, and it's really gonna be a core bug for you as we roll through the spring. Uh, Two-bit stone, um, day in, day out, one of my absolute favorite flies. Um, really durable, heavy, and very, very close to the real thing. Um, so we've got a, a lighter colored golden representation here, and we've got a darker colored guy here, which is going to be closer to what we saw in our sane sample. Uh, we've then got our... Uh, Eye stone, that's Juan Ramirez's eye stone here, uh, and really strong pattern for us. Uh, and then going into more of the Pat's rubber leg, Jimmy leg style, tied on a jig hook. So for your, you Euro nymphers out there, they are eating rubber leg stones pretty regularly right now. That's a good way to go and definitely want to have a rubber leg in your box to, uh, you know, mix it up and throw in a tractor style at them. Wired stonefly, 
this guy here is is very similar to our our natural and uh, a really a heavy hitter here on the Arkansas. Rolling into our crane fly larva, uh, we've got a twisted crane, which is my particular favorite in kind of a dark tan. That's going to be very very close to your natural, and then the CZ crane, more of a Euro nymphing style, but a really popular crane fly on this river also. Free swimming caddis. You saw those guys turning cartwheels cartwheels in the container um, very very active during this window of time and will be really core breadwinning flies for you uh, moving through the springtime um, we've got uh, this uh, tube caddis larva um, these are size 14 um, we've got the hair copper that's been a really good free swimming caddis larva for us here on this river really nice attractor pattern Net builder caddis, um, really strong free swimming caddis representation. Um, for our case caddis, which we saw, we had a couple case caddis in the sample. Uh, Frenchie, Frenchie's really great pattern, just overall a tractor, but a really nice case caddis pattern. As is the blow to blowtorch. Blowtorch is one of our best flies on this river, 365 days a year, and that'll fish is your free swimming caddis uh, or case caddis and all of the above. Keeping in mind that we're moving into, uh, you know, that springtime window, definitely want to be prepared with some smaller caddis larva. Also, just a, a simple beadhead tungsten caddis larva here and our graphic caddis or pooter pupa um, with a, a beadhead in that emerger category. Moving into our blue-winged olive nymphs, um, heavy hitter here on this river, uh, the diabetes. Uh, that is one of our core kind of Euro nymphing style flies, but great to throw in, under an indicator. Another Euro nymphing style fly, the fullback uh, Napoleon tied on a jig. Um, these are both size 18 here, a little bit different hooks, but in that category. Um, Jedi uh, Master, that's Juan Ramirez's pattern. Uh, we love this in purple and olive in size 20, 22, especially in the early early spring. Um, shot glass betas, this is Shea Gunkel's pattern. Really, really core fly for us uh, here, and we love it in purple and olive as well. Um, we've got a uh, foam wing style emerger um, here. Those are always good to have in your box. We've got a variety of different foam wing emergers. Um, so as those BWOs do begin to hatch in the month of March, um, we will definitely lean heavily on the emergers. This is a bat wing emerger, another great BWO emerger. And then a few dries just to show you, this is a hatchback. This is my particular favorite BWO dry right now. Just super visible, floats great. Fish love it. This is a mini hot. This is uh, Garcia's mini hot, which has been a standby for us on this river. A few other odds and ends. We don't want to forget our midge larva. There are um, a lot of them out there still and definitely will be core flies for you. Um, this is a CrossFit midge up top, which is a favorite pattern here. The zebra midge uh, below it. Um, we carry a million different colors of zebra midge and really hard to beat. Um, for a midge dry, um, this is called a melting pot midge. This is Theo's melting pot. Do keep in mind that we are rolling into rainbow trout spawning uh, territory, you know, in March and April. And so those rainbows will be very aggressive, as will the browns. And it's never a bad idea to have a variety of different worm patterns in your box and ready to roll as are leeches they they will be uh significant players in spring as they are through the summer season so a jig style like a landon's mini leech in black and olive are good patterns to have we are fishing streamers in the springtime and and you just got to know how to fish them it's definitely on a slower kind of dead swing not as rapid a retrieve as we do find is successful in the summer months but uh, with rainbow trout spawn going, we do want to focus more on those uh, baby brown, baby rainbow, you know, style 
patterns. Um, Laser Legals and Sparkle Yummies are two that I really have done well with in the spring, but um, boy, folks, if you want to come shop streamers in this shop, you name it, we've got it. Our streamer wall is incredible, and we will have even more of those as we move into the spring. So hopefully uh, that gives you a really strong idea of what you should be prepared with uh, as we move through February and through March. Um, a lot of these patterns are going to be staple flies for you. Uh, and then as we move into April, we'll obviously focus um, start to be switch focus into the caddis category more, but um, for now, in this great early spring window, these are flies to be prepared with, and they are available, all of them, on our website at ruralgorgeanglers.com. All righty, folks. So uh, hopefully that was a lot of fun for you to take a look at the bugs themselves and the patterns and how we go through that process as guides and understanding how we're going to replicate the exact food source um, and, and where to, to approach those fish, how to fish it. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, it is all about that walking speed current, deep tail outs, areas of least resistance right now. Fish will begin to then move into heavier water, heavier oxygenated water and pocket water, heavier riffles as we progress into the month of March and through the month of March. Um, we also threw in some uh, blue winged olive emergers and dries in anticipation of that blue winged olive activity that is coming very, very quickly. Uh, and if you're viewing this in the month of March, um, of course, all of these bugs are present and very um, applicable to uh, how we are fishing it uh, right now. Uh, and then, of course, we, we now have uh, an upturn in full life cycle activity in the blue winged olive population. So that will be key for you. Uh, you know, if you, you are watching this video in, in early spring and middle, late March, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of really cool things to understand uh, to make us better anglers out there. Um, but as always, uh, we're here to help. We're here to assist you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we'd love to do that. We, of course, have a great guide service. And so if you're interested in those fantastic spring months, you know, the, the March time period, the April, which is world-renowned, you know, time period to fish our river with heavy BW activity and upturning caddis activity, early May, um, we'd love to take you out there to walk you through uh, how we are successful on the river um, from understanding reading water, understanding access, understanding how to rig, and understanding those patterns. Uh, you know, uh, that's what we're here for is got a guide service, and we've got a fantastic team uh, to get you out there if you'd like to uh, hire a guide for a day or a couple couple days. Um, we do everything from half days to full days to multi days, uh, walk wades, float trips. Uh, we are starting um, to move into our backcountry venues here in the early spring as well. So small water applications are definitely uh, in the wheelhouse now uh, also. Uh, and so there's a, a lot of great opportunities here in the Royal Gorge region. And we guide the Arkansas River all the way to the headwater at Leadville. Also, the Arkansas tailwater being one of our bread and butter sections, we have the oldest permit on that section of, uh, of the Arkansas. Um, it's 25 minutes east of Canyon City, and so that's a fantastic option through the spring months. Uh, you know, just one that uh, you, you have to go experience in, in the spring. It's, it's a lot of fun down there. So a lot of great options within the guide service. Of course, if you wanna swing by the fly shop, we're happy to help you and walk you through all of this uh, individually. That's uh, what we're here for, what we love to do on a daily basis. I'm in here a lot uh, and we've got a great team here in the fly shop uh, with, you know, uncounted number of years of experience. You know, we are celebrating our 34th year in business here 
this year is one of the oldest fly shops in the state of Colorado. So um, love to help you. Um, we're always here to help. Uh, whether you uh, give us a call for a report or swing by the fly shop, uh, and we are reachable, uh, you know, via phone or email at 888-994-6743 or at info at royalgorgeanglers.com. Uh, thanks so much for viewing today. Uh, hope you have a fantastic early spring season on the Arkansas River, North America's longest gold medal fishery. Uh, and swing by and see us. Uh, love the opportunity to meet every one of you and enjoy your time on the water.